at all. So okay, I'm going to do a very quick breakdown of uh, uh, of the first round of the candidates tournament. I'm just going to point to a, a few interesting moments. Um, I'm just going to show you also my my annotations, and you can see they are endless. And if you're interested in them, they will be available at uh, uschess.org, uh, where I will be annotating game of the day every day. But I'm just going to give very quick breakdowns of uh, breakdown of the four games and very key moments. Um, first of all, uh, Kawana he chose to go for uh, the poison pawn against uh, MBL or MBL chose to go for the poison pawn against Kawana. And uh, if you look uh, at past experience, then MBL has lost a number of times uh, in this line. And it's mainly because he doesn't seem to know it inside out, keeps repeating it and get hit by uh, bluffs. So uh, most recent, uh, Kawana in my can see, play bishop e2. And uh, already at this point, after uh, 13 moves, uh, the position was winning for white. This uh, e6 move with the idea of bishop takes and comes f5 and castles and very strong attack. Um, this time, uh, Kawana had uh, something prepared uh, in the main line. Here, g5 is another option. Um, but uh, knight ft7 is big main line, knight b4, queen a2, rook d1, queen b2 has been played sometimes, it's also a decent move, it seems. Uh, queen d5, queen e3, queen e5. Um, MVL did play a game with Geary, who tried bishop e2 here and went well for, for black, but he has c3, big main line. Uh, another important line here is bishop e7, which at the cursory looked looked uh, very solid for black. It'd be very interesting to see what Kawana had prepared there. But uh, bishop c5, big mainline move, bishop g3, and queen d5. And this is the uh, the big moment uh, of the game, where here Kawana came with uh, with the big novelty, and it's not. Uh, the best move in the position uh, necessarily, which is probably bishop d6 with, with equal play. Um, but it does create a lot of practical problems for black, and that's what chess is about. It's a game we try to play better than our opponent, and if we give our opponent lots of problems, that will give him plenty of chances to make mistakes. We cannot win without our opponents making mistakes. Um, so I actually had the opinion and I still do have the opinion to some extent um, that these very, very deep preparation didn't really work in this tournament so far. Um, if you want to go back and look, you can at US uh, chess.org, you can find an overview over the annotated games from last year. Uh, Geary had a very convoluted and complex novelty against Nepomniachtchi in the first round, but actually it worked better for. Uh, uh, Nepomniachtchi and I work for Giri, just playing moves. And uh, the games that Nepomniachtchi won later in the tournament, he won that game, and the games he won later in the tournament um, were both small novelties, which just gave a playable possession, and he played better chess. While Kawana also had a, a big novelty against um, Ding Liren, uh, but then simply uh, misremembered his lines, it looks like. And, uh, and lost that game. So, so far the deep preparation hasn't really worked. And uh, today was an exception uh, to this. So here, uh, Kawana played this bishop c4 move. Um, so I give it interesting. That's sort of generous in objectivity. It should maybe be dubious, but in reality, it is a fantastic novelty, just like his e5 against Ingliren was a fantastic novelty. Um, so here, black can only take, comes bishop d6, knight f6. And there's all kind of complications here. And you can see the annotations later. But I want to jump ahead a little bit. Uh, this is just a breakdown. So at some point, um, MVL was running low on time and still had a lot of practical problems. And here, uh, he has a good deal of material up. 
But on the other hand, um, his pieces are hanging. And this point, he had a chance to find a real equalizing opportunity. It was the last, last real chance. There was an earlier chance here in this position where knight f6, the knight goes somewhere, for example, f8, and then bishop e6. Uh, because if, if, if knight e6 and king f7, we have rook e8 on the way, and the black piece is coming in, knight c6 is coming. And this end game here would be something white would have to be a little, little cautious about. And it, would, it would probably make the draw pretty easily, um, but these things could backfire. But here was the real thing where he, I'm sure that MVL wanted to play rook a7 and not lose the rook. Um, but here these knight d5, knight e7 tricks are, are real, really, really real. And the way to avoid them is king g6 uh, with either the idea knight c6 or ideally just king h7, getting out of all the tricks. And in a moment, he will be able to b6 or b5 and black's not worse. So the game became a bit modeled and uh, Kawana got a, a real advantage. And then we got to this point here, um, which was really the moment where I was shocked. Um, so in this position, uh, white has a number of ways to play. Uh, H3 and, and, and slow play it should give a, a pretty good chance for winning the game. Uh, the most aggressive move is rook d6. After knight f5, rook b6. Uh, if rook c1, we play rook f1. And here black has a, a big problem holding his pitch together. Um, but Karana played h4, and this uh, it was really a bad move, and it took him 29 seconds to decide on it. He had 51 minutes, and he spent 29 seconds. Now, if you play this move as a mistake, because there's something you misunderstand, that's fine. Um, I, I would think, you know, like uh, if I was the coach of Kawana, which obviously I'm not, I would say, okay, you make a mistake, this can happen. Um, but after 29 seconds, when all the preparation has gone in and you finally have an advantage, and he played after 29 seconds. It was really unbelievable. So what he had missed, uh, I think is quite easy to guess, uh, which was uh, then this position, if knight g6, we have rook h5, and if rook c1, we have rook f1. But he simply missed intermediate move check because now rook f1 doesn't work. The rook would hang on g5. And rook has to stay in the f line. So this pawn goes. And we get to a, a fairly well-known ending. Uh, here. In this position here, black needs to uh, to have the right setup. And MVL never achieved this. Um, and yeah, th this was sort of uh, the big the big issue. So at this point, he he correctly puts the king around to g6. So that there are a few things to understand about this endgame. So the first thing is, let's say we we allow the white king to come in. Now, if the moment the king comes to h5, it will always come to h6 because the check from the side will make it impossible for the king to hold it out. If we say king g7 round here, by the way, we cannot take this, this pawn, the knight will get trapped. But if you wait slowly here, eventually you will get sukswanked and here king g6, king f5, and the f6 pawn will be lost. The white king simply cannot get this close. And if king e6 here, and we wait like this, again, we see that just with dominating play, uh, it would be possible for white to create threats. Here it's, it's g4, g5, which against which there's no defense. Um, so this is important to understand. Um, but later on, when we get to, to this position here, we have to understand the setup uh, black is wanting to have the knight has to keep the king away. And uh, MVL never managed to get the right setup. Um, the moment he gets the wrong setup, he can be sukswanged and dominated. And this is what happened in the game with, uh, with some blemishes. Uh, so if uh, he has a setup like this, the king will never come in because from g7, 
the knight is controlling all these crucial squares. This is it. The knight simply belongs there. Um, there is not much more to it, really. Working this out is very easy when you have table bases in an engine, but understanding it during the board, during the game of the board is, is not easy. So MVL played here, and now he gets Shukswand. The knight is lacking the squares, and here there was uh, a little mistake. We see that Kawana soon found the right direction, and MBL didn't know that at this point he had done anything wrong. And again, we know the knight belongs on G7. So although this looks like a very fantastical move, if we know the knight belongs on G7, it's actually not so difficult. We can see here how it prevents the white king from coming in. This is really, really vital. Uh, in the game, he played the knight to e7, and this time Kawana found this uh, maneuver. And there are different variations, but essentially he cannot keep the king in, the king out, and eventually the king made it to here. Um, Wang Hao against Ding Liren. Um, the only thing there is to say is uh, all games were drawn that were played in this line, except in one game. Rook b8 was played here, and after queen c3, uh, it was over, mate. Um, how that can happen in an email game, I do not know. Okay, so uh, Neponyachi against Giri. Uh, the critical line here is probably something Giri has analyzed all the way to a draw. Why you would want to play for draw with black and not seek something more double-edged than the knight of, for example, which Giri plays so amazingly. I don't know. Uh, eventually, that a position where if I was white, I would play on. Um, but then I don't have to nurture a lead in the candidates tournament. So here, you know, this is a, a strategic decision, which you can argue. Um, but uh, Nepomiachi thought it was in, in his interest to make a draw, and uh, Giri was slightly worse. Okay, um, so another poison pawn, but this time in the French. This is probably the best line at all that exists for black in the French. And I was analyzing it a lot uh, during the game, and I've analyzed in the past, and it just seems very, very solid uh, to me. Um, here, uh, it's a very, very critical line, queen h4 check. And I, I just think it's fine for black. Um, so there was, uh, while I was, uh, was analyzing this, there was one line that came up in uh, one position in my analysis here. And I know you can see the the move here, but it's a, it's quite interesting uh, little combination that knight d5 does not work because black ends with an extra piece, but queen takes c4 does win because there's no check on e2 this time and no g4 and no h no c2 hanging and bishop g4 rook h4 and white has an extra exchange. So a nice little uh, little combination. Um, so the whole thing here. Yeah, Alexenko thought for a long time, and I looked at the uh, the analysis of this line and here, and I'm sure that Grischuk was was planning to castle. There was previously been a, a correspondence game that went like this. This end game is winning for White, as far as I can tell. Uh, but here, after castle, Rook B7 really the only move. Otherwise. Uh, you don't get the pawn, which you get in this line. And then here, bishop a5 and take. And there's several several ways to play. But essentially, this endgame is a draw. Black will put the pawns on g6 and h5. And the bishop on f5, the pawns, the and c pawns are too close together for white to be able to uh, let black or be, king be occupied with the one and then sneak in. Black will be able to, to block both of them, uh, as far as I can see. And uh, yeah, I think this was a preparation. Then later on, the game was, was, was quite complicated. At some point, um, 
Alexenko, I think he just blundered uh, the exchange. King d4, bishop d3. Now rook d6 is a big threat. The take, the take on g7 was forced, and take here and here. Grisjok, with his usual few seconds on the clock, had to find a very accurate bishop g8 to play for an advantage. Uh, instead, he played a4, and he played a few not very good moves. And by the time control, uh, why is better? But the end game is objectively drawn. Um, so here they played around for a long time. There was a lot of development. Uh, there were some mistakes. Here at this point, if the rook stays on the A file, it can defend the A pawn. Um, King F5 was uh, was the right defensive move. Sort of the important thing to understand about this end game is if white ends with the bishop, the king, and we only have the A pawns. Uh, it is a draw unless the black king is trapped uh, at the very wrong place. And I am not 100% confident about where that is. But the key point is the moment the white king takes on a4, the black king will make it to the corner. Um, uh, so here he, he made a mistake like this, and there's some... Bishop d8 problems, there's some rook g4 problems. So uh, at this point, he lost the a pawn and now it was lost. And then we, here there was the first chance to win. And it's usually like this. We have to play accurate at some point. And if we play a little bit superficial, uh, then we have to play even more accurate later. So here he played bishop, uh, he played rook e4, but bishop d6 first. And then here, uh, was accurate. The bishop defends the a pawn. This is not at all easy to see. He played rook here. I have to move the a pawn. And the a pawn was better off on a3 where the bishop was defending it. There's no way the black king's going to make it to a8. So here he had to find a, a really difficult win. He just didn't. Um, and they here and here and back again. And the win is like this. King d6, threatening e8, and then a way to move. And it is very rookie to also work. It is is sort of mind-blowing. The, the key idea is that black cannot play this, but you cannot really play anything else either. Um, it's it's really it's, it's a very strange shook swang for me, and I wouldn't say I fully understand it. Um, at this point here. Uh, after king c6, and rook e3. After this here, it's not so easy to see how uh, white's going to make progress. It's a very, very perplexing ending. And uh, in my Game of the Day article, which I'm about to write as soon as we finish on uh, uschess.org, um, I'm going to do the, the Kawana game because it's the one everyone wants to see. Um, but I have to say, I find this end game very, very, very interesting. I'll be looking at it later in depth. Um, there's some things that, that don't come easily, but if you want, you can check them yourself. And uh, that's the end of the breakdown from round one. You can see the standings of the candidates tournament everywhere on the internet. Um, I still believe, as I believed before today, that Kawana is the favorite to uh, win the tournament. I also want him to win the tournament, um, not because I'm a special fan of him. I like him fine. He's always been nice to me. Um, but I want uh, the World Championship match to be between the best players. I want it to be... Uh, one where the world champion uh, has to fight for his life. And of the possible winners uh, of this tournament, I think Kawana and Ding Liren uh, are the only, are the ones, are the players who can give Magnus the biggest fight. And Ding Liren is uh, in last place, so it's not going to be him. Uh, so I believe Kawana is still the favorite. I hope he will win the tournament. And I hope that this has been useful for the three people who might see it. One of them, which will be the admin, and uh, maybe the technical side will be more under control for tomorrow. Thank you very much.